in the last video we have discussed about the hip bone its side determination and its anatomical position now in this video we are going to discuss in detail about the parts of the hip bone and its muscle attachments so first we will discuss about the ilium ilium is the superior most part of the hip bone which is having two ends this is upper end and this is lower end which forms the upper two fifth of the acetabulum and now there are three borders of the hip bone the first is ilium which is having three borders anterior border which starts from the anterior superior iliac spine and runs downwards up to the acetabulum here acetabulum and posterior border which runs from the posterior superior iliac spine and joins up to the ischium posterior border of the ischium and now the medial border this medial border start from the junction of the ventral one two third and dorsal one third and runs downwards and medially and runs up to the ilia iliopubic eminence this is a iliopubic eminence the rough surface that is known as iliopubic eminence now the upper end which is also known as the iliac crust having curvatures and it is divided into mainly two parts ventral two third and dorsal one third or anterior two third and posterior one third in its ventral two third it is concave outwards concave outwards and dorsal one third it is concave inwards and now this upper end or the iliac crust which is bounded by the anteriorly by the anterior superior iliac spine and posteriorly by the posterior superior iliac spine now there are three surfaces of the ilium those are this is iliac fossa which is present in between the anterior border and medial border and this is sacro pelvic surface sacro pelvic surface which is present in between the medial border and the posterior border and this is a gluteal surface on the lateral aspect which is present in between the anterior and posterior borders this is anterior border and this is posterior border which is present in between these two borders now we will see about the three surfaces this is iliac surface or it is also known as iliac fossa that is present in front of the medial border and here it is convex laterally or convex in its superior most part and it forms the lateral wall of the true pelvis and now the gluteal surface this gluteal surface which is divided by the three lines or three prominent ridges into the four surfaces there are three lines or three ridges those are this is posterior uh, gluteal line this is anterior gluteal line and this is a inferior gluteal line so here the first one the posterior gluteal line that starts from the approximately 5 cm in front of the posterior superior iliac spine and runs downwards and runs up to the or extends up to the upper part of the greater sciatic notch and this is anterior gluteal line which is approximately 5 cm from the anterior superior iliac spine runs downwards and backwards up to the upper margin of the greater sciatic notch and this is inferior line just above the anterior inferior iliac spine runs downwards and backwards up to the apex of the greater sciatic notch these are the four 
areas or the four surfaces which are divided by the three gluteal lines inferior gluteal line anterior gluteal line and posterior gluteal line now the sacropelvic surface this is a sacropelvic surface this one so this sacropelvic surface which is divided into three surfaces so here it is a auricular surface this one auricular surface l shaped auricular surface this auricular surface which articulates with the sacrum to form the sacroiliac joint and this is a iliac tuberosity which is just below the dorsal one third of the ilium and next this is pelvic surface pelvic surface which is smooth and antero inferior to the auricular surface now we are going to discuss about the attachments on the ilium of the hip bone so this is anterior superior iliac spine there is an attachment of lateral end of the inguinal ligament as well as sartorius muscle on this part and now we will discuss about the muscle attachments on the iliac crust and here iliac crust which is divided into ventral 2/3 and dorsal 1/3 and ventral 2/3 which is having three areas this is inner lip and outer lip and this is intermediate area and ventral dorsal 1/3 which is having two slopes on either side this is inner slope outer slope which is divided by the ridge now we will discuss about the muscle attachments over the iliac crust here it is a sartorius muscle on the anterior superior iliac spine and and now the muscle attachments here from the outer lip we will start so this is a iliac tubercle in front of the iliac tubercle there is an origin of the muscle that is tensor fascia lata and just beside this there is insertion of external oblique muscle here it is a insertion of external oblique muscle and just behind the midpoint of the iliac crust here it is a attachment of latissimus dorsi muscle latissimus dorsi muscle on the outer lip and now on the inner lip of the iliac crust which gives origin to the transversus abdominis in its anterior two third here if we divide it into the three parts up to this anterior two third part it gives origin to the transversus abdominis muscle and fascia transversalis as well as fascia iliaca deep to this transversus abdominis there is an attachment of fascia iliaca as well as fascia transversalis up to anterior two third part and its posterior one third which gives origin to the quadratus lumborum muscle quadratus lumborum muscle and now the intermediate area here in this intermediate area there is a muscle attachment that is internal oblique muscle in its whole length there is an attachment of internal oblique muscle now on the dorsal 1/3 here dorsal 1/3 which is already i told you divided into inner slope as well as outer slope and intermediate ridge this outer slope give rise to the muscle gluteus maximus and the inner slope gives origin to the 
erector spiny muscle inner slope erector spiny muscle outer slope gluteus maximus muscle now we will discuss about the attachments over the anterior inferior iliac spine this anterior inferior iliac spine gives attachment to the two structures above there is an attachment of straight head of rectus femoris straight head of rectus femoris and below it is attached to the ilio femoral ligament ilio femoral ligament now attachment from the posterior inferior iliac spine that gives rise to the fibers of piriformis muscle fibers of piriformis muscle now attachments on the gluteal surface as already told you this is posterior gluteal line anterior gluteal line and inferior gluteal line these three lines are very much important for the understanding purpose of the attachments of the ilium or the gluteal surface of the ilium behind the posterior gluteal line there is an attachment of gluteus maximus muscle here in its whole extent this is attachment of gluteus maximus muscle and in between the anterior gluteal line and posterior gluteal line there is an attachment of gluteus medius muscle and in between the anterior gluteal line and inferior gluteal line there is a attachment of gluteus minimus muscle in this area and just below the inferior gluteal line there is a attachment of reflected head of rectus femoris muscle reflected head of rectus femoris muscle here there is attachment of reflected head of rectus femoris and here it is attachment of straight head of rectus femoris muscle now the attachments on the sacro pelvic surface this is a sacro pelvic surface in this the first is iliac tuberosity in this iliac tuberosity there is an attachment of three ligaments the first one is interosseous sacro iliac ligament just above the auricular surface here it is an attachment of sacro sorry dorsal interosseous sacro iliac ligament and here it is attachment of dorsal ilio sacro iliac ligament and here it is just above this there is an attachment of ilio lumbar ligament there are three ligaments have been attached in this iliac tuberosity now this auricular surface in its convex edge that attaches to the ventral sacro iliac ligament this part ventral sacro iliac ligament and now the attachment on the pelvic surface that gives attachment to the obturator internus muscle in its whole extent it it gives attachment to the sacro 